Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in this video I want to share with you a very interesting game where a club player beats the world champion. With the white piece is playing the third world chess champion Jose Raul Capablanca and his opponent is American chess player Alexander Kevitz. This game was played in 1924 in New York during a chess simul which Capablanca gave on 33 boards. By winning this game, Kevitz would become famous and, what is interesting, later in 1928, he would also beat Emmanuel Lasker in a simultaneous game. Later, starting from 1929, Kevitz would win Manhattan Chess Club Championship six times. But before starting our game, make sure that you are subscribed in order not to miss my future uploads. And now without further ado, let's get started with this fascinating game and see what happened on the board. Capablanca who was playing with the white pieces opened up with b4. Usually this is how it goes. The one who is giving a chess simul is playing with the white pieces and he is choosing a very rare line. This is called Polish opening or Sokolski or even is called Orangutan opening. This is considered to be an irregular opening which can be seen very rare. Usually the players are choosing this move as a surprise weapon. But in this case I think that Capablanca went for b4 just for diversity you know. Uh, Kevitz responded with d5. Another popular alternative is pushing forward the e-pawn. That's more popular according to chess databases, but in our game we have d5. Meanwhile, we have bishop b2, bishop f5, e3, e6, and f4. With the transposition of moves, we reached a well known position from bird opening. Usually, in bird opening, the pawn stands on b3, but I have to tell you that I have even seen a game where white goes for b4. For example, in 1964, at Amsterdam Interzonal, Bent Larsen chose b4 against Boris Paski in bird opening and then even advanced further on the queen side. Here Kevitz played knight f6, of course, you can't capture on b4 because of this bishop takes g7 and already after knight f6, Balik is threatening to capture on b4, but what is more interesting in here, Capablanca developed his kingside knight, which I would rather call a dubious decision. Instead, it was better to save this pawn by playing a3, but in our game we have knight f3 and Kevitz simply munched the pawn on b4 and I have to tell you that white has no compensation for that sacrificed pawn. Knight c3, knight d7 and knight e2. Another strange move, this is not where you are putting your queenside knight in bird's opening, here Kevitz played knight g4, already he wants to play knight takes e3, relying on this pin. That's why Capablanca played c3, bishop e7, h3, and instead of moving away his knight, Kevitz made a brilliant move, knight c5. It turns out that the knight is untouchable because of this checkmate, a brutal checkmate, right guys? And actually after knight c5, Yes, white is in trouble. There are so many problems in white's camp. Now if you move away your knight, which could allow white to meet bishop h4 check with g3, for example, if you move it away, then already this bishop h4 check becomes a real threat. That's why Capablanca decided to put it on g3, somewhat block the e1 h4 diagonal and open up the light squared bishop's diagonal in order to neutralize the mating threat. But here we have bishop h4. Black wants to win this knight. White played knight takes h4, queen takes h4 and queen f3. Looks like that white managed to successfully repel Black's attack. And right now is even threatening to win the knight on g4. But in here, Kevis delivered a powerful move and he captured on e3. Look at this beautiful move, guys. Right now, black is threatening knight c2 check. Let's first take a look what if, for example, rook c1 and then we will cover the lines starting with queen takes e3 or d takes e3. For example, now if rook c1, then black can intensify the pin. If queen takes e3, then black can first castle queen side. This knight is black's prey and in the end of the day, if we have a look at the position, 
white has a shuttered position and black has two extra pawns this is going to be completely winning for black or after knight takes e3 if d takes e3 then anyways knight e4 is coming and again in the end of the day black is going to win pretty easily white has too many weaknesses in his position and black has two extra pawns all eight black pawns are on the board right or after knight takes e3 if queen takes e3 then again knight e4 if you now a check then simply c6 and again this is going to be winning for black two extra pawns will play a decisive role in the game let's go back so after knight takes e3 capablanca played queen f2 but after this simple knight takes f1 move he resigned well it's hard to find a good continuation for white if king takes f1 the knight d3 is coming and white's position is totally lost guys that's why after knight takes f1 capablanca decided to resign what a shock right being a world champion and getting crushed in such a brutal way is very unpleasant but that was capablanca's fault everything started from that dubious pawn sacrifice on b4 well in the end let's also solve a chess puzzle where the task is to find the winning move for black there is a back rank weakness and that's actually a hint which will help you to find the answer easily i will wait for your answer in the comment section thanks for watching in the end feel free to check out these suggestions as well i will see you in my next video take care